Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. (laughs) The Kraft Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time, Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Meantime, let me tell you what a friend told me the other day. She said, we tried spreading parquet margarine on our bread for the first time last week, and we were certainly surprised. Why, it's really delicious. Well, I don't know why anyone should be surprised that parquet margarine tastes so good, because parquet margarine is made by Kraft. Yes, and made to be just as good tasting and nutritious as all of Kraft's fine foods. Parquet's flavor is delicate and appetizing, just right for a really satisfying spread for bread. What's more, parquet margarine adds important food values to meals. It's an excellent energy food, one of the best you can serve. And besides, every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. Yes, parquet margarine is both nutritious and delicious, and it's wonderfully economical, too. So why not treat your family to parquet margarine tomorrow? Just ask your food dealer for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's see what the great Gildersleeve is up to. For a week, he's been strictly on the job at the water department, but today, with everything running smoothly, he's been able to give a couple of hours at lunch to laying out future strategy for Eisenhower and MacArthur. So we find him now at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, returning to his office to sign some letters before proceeding to the barber shop. Hello. You still there, Mabel? So then we hung around for a while and... Oh, wait. I think somebody's coming. I'll call you back. Uh, miss. Uh, you there. Bessie. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was so bu- busy finishing these letters, I-, I didn't hear you come in. Yeah, that's just what I was going to ask. They're not done yet? All but three, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I'll have those for you right away. But I only gave you four. If any phone calls? No, sir. Oh, yes, there was one from the newspaper. The indicator. What did they want? Well, it was kind of personal, Mr. Gildersleeve. What do you mean? Who called? The editor? No, sir. He said he was a society editor. What did he want? He asked when you were going to <laughs> get married. Oh, well, the date hasn't exactly been set yet. What did you tell him? Oh, I didn't tell him anything, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good. I just said what you told me to say when people called up and I didn't know what to say. Huh? You did what? Well, I just did what you told me, Mr. Gildersleeve. He asked when you were going to get married and I didn't know. What did you say? We regret there's been a slight delay owing to the shortage in manpower. (laughs) That's all, brother. That'll fix it nicely. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, these letters... I'll sign them in the morning, and if the phone rings, don't answer it. Oh, that Bessie, I'm going to have to let her go. Well, speak of the devil. Oh, hello, Floyd. Judge and I were just talking about you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Are you living at this barber shop now, Hooker? Every time I come in here, you're here. Every time I'm here, you come in. Yeah, well, <laughs> just give the judge a quick trim, Floyd. There's no use trying to make him look good. Gildersleeve, go over there and sit down, will you? And keep out of my hair. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I was just saying to the judge here, Mr. Gildersleeve, I can't imagine you a married man. I'd like to know why not. Well, you know what they say. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. But none of us getting any younger. Maybe you're not. By the way, Gildy, uh? when are you and Leela planning to get married? Why do you want to know? Just interested, that's all. Well, we haven't set the date yet. What's the matter, Gildy? Is she giving you the runaround? Why do you ask that? Well, you've been engaged quite a while now. People are beginning to talk. Yeah. Beginning to say, what about this? Is she going to marry him or isn't she? Of course she's going to marry him. Uh, me. We're just waiting till, well, we thought we'd wait a while, that's all. Well, that's women for you. Try to pin them down and they give you the slip every time. Now, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I made the mistake of going with a girl for three years. That was before I met my present wife. Everything was lovey-dovey from the start, but there was always a million reasons why she couldn't possibly marry me till the day after tomorrow. So in the end, what happens? A cattleman from Kansas moves in, and I wind up married to my present wife, which is okay. Got a nice little place there. 
Now, you take my advice, Mr. Gildersleeve. Don't make the mistake I made. Pin her down. Get tough. Yeah. Floyd, you know, you could be right. Get tough. And what's more, they love it. Why, 20 years ago, if I'd known as much about women as I do today, it would have been a different story. You'd have married the other girl? I wouldn't have gotten married at all. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute now. You got me confused. That's the way to treat women, all right. Now, look here, Lila Ransom. I've stood all the shilly-shally, and I'm going to. I want an answer, and I want it now. Boo. Boo! <laughs> Leela, never do that to people. It's liable to stunt their growth. I'm sorry, Throckmorton. Come in, won't you? Uh, thank you. I was coming in anyway. I was just going to call you up. I've had the most wonderful news. It'll have to wait. Leela, I demand to know when we're going to be married. For goodness sake, is that all? It, all? Isn't it important to you? Of course, but I've been trying to tell you, Throckmorton. My only sister, Winfield, is coming to visit me tomorrow. That's fine, Leela, but what's that got to do with our wedding day? Why, I wouldn't think of getting married without having Winfield at my wedding. Huh? And besides, I wouldn't want to rush into anything without consulting her. Yeah. I hope she likes you, Throckmorton. I hope so. What if she doesn't? Oh, that just couldn't happen, darling. I'm sure it couldn't. Because when you try, you can be so charming. You will try, won't you? Well, of course. You see, Winfield's married to a Yankee, just like you. But he's the handsomest man I ever saw in my whole life. I hate him. <laughs> he's an engineer, and he's doing some secret construction work for the government at Camp Fuller. So naturally, Winfield and little Michael wanted to be near him. It, Michael? Hmm. That's their little boy. He's just about Leroy's age, but he's not like Leroy at all. Well, that's something. <laughs> Look, Lita, I'll be good to your sister and I'll be good to her little boy. But answer me one thing. When are we going to get married? I'll tell you, Throckmorton. I'll let you take us both to lunch tomorrow and we can ask her then. Oh, mercy, that reminds me. Here it is almost 9 o'clock and I've got to get up and meet a 6 o'clock train tomorrow morning. Uh, can't you stay up just a little longer, Leela? I'll meet the train. Oh, that's sweet of you, Throckmorton, but I'd rather. All right, I'll go. Throckmorton, you're not going away angry. No, I'm going home and think about the Romo plan. Wedding bells. Hey, Aunt, wake up. It's after 7 o'clock. <laughs> Go away. I want to dream some more, Leroy. Well, hurry up or you won't get any buckwheat cakes. If that's different. I'll be right down. Okay, I'll... Yeah. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Leroy. What do you want? My cakes will get cold. Uh, never mind. I have something important to tell you. You certainly picked the crummiest times to give out with the old malarkey. <laughs> <laughs> this is not malarkey. <laughs> Shut the window. Turn off the cold air. Turn on the hot. I heard that, Leroy. I meant turn on the heat. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, listen to me, young man. Mrs. Ransom's sister is coming to visit her. Is she good looking? You're getting too fresh. The lady is arriving this morning, and I want you to make a good impression on her. Okay, what do you want me to do? Stay out of sight. <laughs> she has a little boy, and when the proper time comes, it may be all right for you to play with him. But until I say so, don't you go near him. Up here. Oh, good morning, Marjorie. I was just about to get up. I sent Leroy up because Bertie's making buckwheat cakes, and now Leroy's cakes are cold. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. I was telling him how to behave himself while Mrs. Ransom's sister is here. Oh, when did she come? This morning. I'm eating him for lunch today, but we'll have him here soon. And I want everybody to be as nice to her as possible. Well, I'll certainly do all I can, Uncle Moy. And I'll keep an eye on Leroy. Oh, sure. Let's all keep an eye on Leroy. No, young man. You better start keeping an eye on her, Unc. If you know what time she came in last Leroy, night... Leroy, mind your own business. Mr. Gildersleeve, what's the matter with this family? Oh, good morning, Bertie. I've been cooking here a long time, but this is the first time my buckwheat cakes ever run into a boycott. Yes. Now, Bertie. It's discouraging, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, but your buckwheat cakes are wonderful, Bertie. Maybe they are, and maybe they ain't. All I know is that you and Leroy walked out on them, and your uncle won't even get out of bed to try a sample. Uh, but, Bertie, I was telling him about Mrs. Ransom's sister. She and her little boy are coming to visit Mrs. Ransom, and all of us must do our very best to make them happy. Yes, sir. 
That gives me an idea. What's that, Brady? I wonder, do they need a good cook? No, gangway, everybody. Get downstairs and plow into those buckwheat cakes. Uh, nice windy corner I picked to wait on. Why can't women be on time? Throckmorton. Uh. Oh, Throckmorton, are we too frightfully late? Only about three quarters of an hour. Oh, good. Huh? Uh, Throckmorton, I want you to meet my sister Winfield. Winnie, this is Throckmorton. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Why, darling, he's the spitting image of Harvey Diefenbeck. Only Harvey was thin. <laughs> Well, is indeed. I see what you mean. I don't. Oh, you'd have to know Harvey to appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this little man must be Michael. How are you, Mike? I'm very well, thank you. And you, sir? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Well, I'll bet you're a pretty tough customer. You want to fight, Mike? Put up your dukes. Oh, no, thank you. I'm not allowed to fight. Yeah. Oh, Winnie, I'm so glad you're here. It's going to be just like old times. Won't it? You know, Leela and I were always together. People used to call us the heavenly twins. Oh, really? Well, you don't talk alike. Oh, well, Winnie's been up north so long, she talks like a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> But in the old days, we were more like chums than sisters. Uh, remember when we used to go on dates together? And dress alike. Oh, you remember the summer at Virginia Beach when we switched bowls? Yes, and remember the summer I was so crazy about Tubby Walker? Till the day of the picnic. <laughs> uh, speaking of picnics, ladies, how about a little lunch? Oh, gracious, here we are rambling on like a couple of schoolgirls and forgetting all about Throckmorton. You know, I can't get over how much he looks like Harvey Diefenbach. Who on earth is Harvey Diefenbach? Who is Harvey Diefenbach? Well, Harvey was an old beau of mine that I got engaged to once when I was young and foolish. Oh. <laughs> I lie if every time I think of him. You were dead serious at the time, though. Oh, gracious, yes. And Winnie couldn't see him for dirt. She did everything in her power to break it up. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, how about a little lunch, huh? <laughs> I don't mind telling you, I'm starved. Oh, Throckmorton, I hope you don't mind, but we've only got five minutes to get to the hairdresser. But I thought I was taking you to lunch. Well, that's terribly nice of you. Well, we you... thought if you didn't mind, you could take little Michael to lunch while we have our hair done. Uh, uh, don't you think that would be a good idea? Well, what about the question we were going oh, to ask? Oh, Throckmorton, the... you're a lamb. Isn't he a lamb, Winnie? Now, Michael, you go with Uncle Throckmorton and have a nice lunch. We've got to run. Be a good boy, Michael, and do what Uncle Throckmorton tells you. Have a good time, you man. You hear? Uh, come on, Mike. My name is Michael. Yeah, Michael, come on. We're going into the hotel and have lunch. But I'm not hungry. Well, I am. I've been waiting an hour. This isn't a very nice hotel, is it? It's the best hotel in Summerfield. I've been in bigger ones. Sorry it doesn't measure up to your standards. Let's sit here. Yes, sir. Now, how would you like to eat, Michael? I see they've got roast beef today. Well, I don't like roast beef, thank you. Don't like roast beef? What boy doesn't like roast beef? Well, uh, how about uh, pork chops? I'm allergic to pork. What? It makes me break out. Oh. Well, how about a poached egg? You think you can handle that? <laughs> I had one for breakfast. It wasn't very good either. Yeah. Look, Michael, how about a nice bowl of milk toast? Let's go away from here. I Just don't... a minute. But I really don't see anything. Sit down, you. I'd like a little something to keep body and soul together. I'm going to have roast beef, baked potato, peas, succotash, and pie a la mode. And you, you little squirt, you can sit there and watch me eat it. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. I'm sure you mothers and housewives have noticed that when you cook or bake something especially good for your family, it disappears mighty fast. Well, the same thing often happens to a food product that's exceptionally good. And that explains why your food dealer may sometimes be temporarily out of parquet margarine, Kraft's delicious spread for bread. Of course, Kraft is doing everything possible to keep dealers supplied. But these days, so many people prefer parquet margarine that some dealers just can't keep up with the demand. Now, I don't mean to say that you can't get parquet margarine, Likely as not, most of the time you can. But it is wise to watch your dealer's stocks and buy parquet whenever he has a supply. 
Remember, parquet is an excellent energy food and a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. So it's good advice to always watch for and always ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's see how the great Gildersleeve is coming. The last we saw of him, he was stuck with little Michael at lunch while Leela and her sister went off to the hairdressers. Well, lunch is over now, and a couple of hours have passed, and we find Gildersleeve plodding up the front walk to his house, still with little Michael. Uh, come on. What are you waiting for? Why are we going in here? This is where I live. Oh, it's kind of funny looking, isn't it? Listen, I know it's not much, but it's home to me. Now, come on. Whose bicycle is that? That's Leroy's bicycle. He doesn't take very good care of his things, does he? Yeah. Well, no, he doesn't. But he's a good kid. I'm just beginning to appreciate him. <laughs> uh, Bertie! Oh, you didn't wipe your feet. <laughs> this is my house, and I can come in with dirty feet if I want to. That you, Mr. Gilsley? Uh, Bertie, has Leroy come home from school yet? I'll say he's home. I just caught him out in the kitchen stuffing himself with the applesauce I made for dinner. I didn't know it was for dinner, Ron. That's all right, my boy. If you're hungry, it's a sign you need food. I like to see a boy eat anyway. Huh? <laughs> Leroy, this is Michael. Hi. Michael, meet Leroy. How do you do? I've been looking forward to meeting you. Is he kidding? <laughs> now, Leroy, remember that Michael is your guest. My guest? Yes. I thought it'd be nice if you two boys played together all afternoon. Oh, but Unc, I was just going over to Piggy. She's expecting me. Leroy, I'm asking you as a favor to me. But I thought you told me to keep away from the little punk. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you entertain the little punk and don't give me an argument. Mother says it's not polite to whisper. Uh, yes, and you're right, too, Sonny. <laughs> Here, Leroy, here's a dollar. Take it and entertain your little friend in any way you see fit. Okay, come on, Mike. Where are we going? Down to the drugstore. Do you like comic books? Oh, Mother doesn't allow me to read comic books. That's all right, Michael. You go with Leroy and have a good time. Oh, but Mother... Mother will, will never know. <laughs> Boy, that was a short soda. I win. I hit bottom first. Well, you cheated. You've still got some left. I have not. Look. Well, anyway, I made mine last longer. Sour grapes. And when I finish this one, I'm probably going to have another. Yeah? Who's going to pay for it? Oh, I've got money. Oh, mister? His name is Peavy. Yes? Yeah, what can I do for you young gentlemen now? I'll have another chocolate raspberry soda. Well, I'm sorry, son, but we have a rule here. Only two of those to a customer. I suppose you think if you make me another one, I'll be sick. If I make you another one, Sonny, I'll be sick. <laughs> well, my mother lets me drink all the sodas I want. Well, if you'll bring me a note from your mother to that effect, I'll be glad to fill the prescription. But I, <laughs> I wouldn't care to take the responsibility myself. Listen, you have no right... Hey, why don't you stop hollering and finish the soda you've got? I don't want to. I paid for it. You go on and finish it. I don't want to. Why not? I don't think I... Feel very well. <laughs> here, give it to me. I'll finish it. Oh, here you are. Hi, Unc. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leroy, where in the world have you two been? Right here. You know what time it is? Michael, your mother's been looking all over the place for you. She's just about crazy. Well, I'm afraid our young friend here has overindulged a bit, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? I don't feel very well. Oh, my goodness, look at him. Spots! <laughs> well, now, there's nothing to be alarmed at, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'd say it was just a simple case of hives. Nothing to be alarmed at. I'll get the blame for this. What's he been eating? Well, he's under the influence of a couple of raspberry sodas. <laughs> a couple? Peavy, what kind of a joint are you running here? I'm just trying to run a respectable drugstore, Mr. Gildersleeve. You know what you're running? A public nuisance. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> You ought to know better than to stuff a kid with sodas. How is this going to look for me? I'm supposed to be taking care of this little twerp. When his mother sees me, sees him, she'll burn up. What am I going to do? 
Well, a little calum and lotion might relieve the irritation. Oh, goodbye, TV. <laughs> I won't come in. I just wondered if little Michael is better today. Mm, a little better, I think. Fine. Uh, keep him warm. <laughs> Leela, I wondered if you'd care to go to the movies with me tonight, being Crosby and something or other. Oh, I'd love to go, Throckmorton, but Winfield's crazy about Bing. Uh, why don't you take her instead? Well, that'll be all right, only... Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. I know she'll have a lovely time. <laughs> Hello, Leela. I have two tickets to the subscription concert this evening. Would you be able to go? Oh, Throckmorton, you must take Winfield. She just loves music. But I want to see you. Oh, you can see me anytime. When, for instance? I got these tickets just for you, Leela. I know. Get three tickets and we'll all go. <laughs> Leela, you're going out to dinner with me tonight. But Throckmorton... No, I won't take no for an answer. I haven't seen you alone for a week. Well, I'd love to, Throckmorton, but I just don't like to go out and leave Winfield alone. I got that all taken care of, too. Judge Hooker's going to take Winnie to dinner and the movies. Oh. Uh, now, will you have dinner with me, or do I have to kidnap you? Oh, Throckmorton, you're so masterful. Yeah. <laughs> what can a girl say? All right, and I'll be expecting an answer to a certain question you've been putting off, too. <laughs> That was certainly a wonderful dinner. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Oh, but it's nice to be home here with just you. I hope Judge Hooker took Winfield to a nice place. Yeah, don't worry. The judge is a spender. They're probably at the movies by now. Well, I'd rather just sit here by the fire with you and talk. Yeah, me too. <laughs> what shall we talk about, Throckmorton? Well... I've been trying all evening to get you to answer one question. Oh, Throckmorton, you're not going to stop that again. I'd like to know why not. Well, you're so unromantic about it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> let's talk about you then, huh? You know what I think is the cutest thing about you? No. What? Your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Your ears are so pink, and they stick out. What? Why, Throckmorton? From under your hair, I mean. Oh. You know, there's something I've been wondering for a long time. What? If you kiss a person in the ear, do they feel it or hear it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very interesting question, Throckmorton. Yeah, and I know how to find out, too. Mm -hmm. Uncle Throckmorton. What are you doing? <laughs> I wish that kid was Leroy for five minutes. Oh, gracious, Michael, why aren't you asleep, honey lion? Well, I got nervous upstairs, Aunt Leela, so I thought I'd come and sit with you for a while. But, Michael, don't you want the Sandman to come and take you to the land of Nod? Oh, no, I never go to sleep until Mommy comes home. You don't, huh? Well, now that's no way to grow big and strong, Michael. I bet if you lie down in your little bed and let Uncle Throckmorton tell you a little story... You'll be asleep in no time. I don't like stories, thank you. Oh, uh, you like this one. Now, Throckmorton, don't force the child. Yes, I won't, Leela. Now, let's just try it, shall we, Michael? Just come upstairs with me, and if you don't like the story, you can come down here again. Is that a promise, Uncle Throckmorton? Cross my heart and hope you die. I die. <laughs> All right, but I'm warning you, I hate animal stories. Uh, suit yourself, my boy. No animal stories. I'll be back in a moment, Leela. And I don't like all right, no fairy stories. And I really can't stand it. Never mind. <laughs> now, young man, let's come to an understanding. I want you to get in your bed and stay there. But I don't want to. All right. Now, what do you want most of anything in the world? I want to be one of the quiz kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, next to that, be reasonable. I want a chemistry set. You sucker. What do they cost? Two dollars and a half, I believe. All right, here's three dollars. Now... You think you can go to sleep? I think so. All right. Sweet dreams. <laughs> well, Throckmorton, you're wonderful. Oh, that's nothing. 
nothing, Leela. I have a way with children. <laughs> I didn't realize you were such a storyteller. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't stop playing, Leela. That was beautiful. Well, if you really enjoy it. Tell me the story you told Michael, won't you? What, and put you to sleep, too? <laughs> I bet it wouldn't. Tell me a story, Throckmorton. All right, I'll tell one just for you. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess named Leela. Uh, she was the prettiest princess in the whole world. Uh, is the princess asleep for a hundred years on account of a witch? Uh-huh, that's right. And, um, and what does it take to wake her up? A kiss. From a prince? No, from a water commissioner. <laughs> Leela. Yes, Rock Martin. Leela. Oh, hello, everybody. Well, I'll be a... Oh, hello, Winnie, darling. Don't get me to serve you. I'm just going upstairs. But, Winnie, I'll be right down in a minute. Leela, this is the last straw. Uh, what do you mean, Rock Martin? You know what I mean. I wanted an evening alone with you, and here she is again. Well, I'm sorry, Rock Martin. Don't you try to pull the wool over my eyes. You and your sister planned this. But, Rock Martin, we didn't. I'm not blind, Leela. Your sister's doing to me just what she did to Harry Dittendorfer. <sighs> Harvey Diefenbach. Harvey Diefenbach. I, I don't know what you're talking about. She's been keeping us apart, tearing me down, trying to break off our engagement. It's a conspiracy. Throckmorton Gildersleeve, I never heard such talk. It's not just talk, Leela. I'm through being made a fool of by your sister and your sister's little boy. You can choose between us right now. Mr. Gildersleeve, I will not deny my own flesh and blood for you or anybody else. Please consider our engagement at an end. Here. But what? Your ring. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night. Hello, Gildy. Yeah. Hooker, what did you bring that woman back here for? Why, we're on our way to the movie. She just stopped in to get her lipstick. Oh! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's a special bulletin from Washington. Price Administrator Prentice M. Brown announces that effective today, shoes are rationed. This includes all shoes with leather or rubber soles. Wartime requirements make this necessary. Every person will be entitled to buy one pair of new shoes during the next four months. There are only three things you must know. First, no shoes may be sold to consumers until Tuesday. Second, beginning Tuesday, every person is entitled to buy one pair of shoes with stamp number 17 of War Ration Book 1, the Sugar and Coffee Book. Third, the shoe stamp for, from the ration book of one member of a family may be used for any other member of that family group living in the same household. And here's a special word for shoe dealers. Remember, shoes cannot be sold at retail until Tuesday morning, but dealers may make and receive shipments and place orders as usual within the trade. Beginning Tuesday... Retailers must collect stamp number 17 from War Ration Book 1 for every pair sold to consumers. Supplies are large enough to provide everyone with shoes and to give everyone his fair share. Good night, everybody. This is Ken Cartman, the speaking for the Fast Cruise Company, inviting you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. You women are having your shopping troubles these days. So let me tip you off to a quick solution to that main dish problem. At your food store, whenever you see the yellow and blue package marked Kraft Dinner, think of this. Macaroni and cheese ready in seven minutes cooking time. You see, that Kraft Dinner package contains a special quick cooking macaroni that cooks fluffy, tender, in boiling water. The package also gives you some Kraft grated so you can sprinkle in the cheese goodness in a jiffy. Just seven minutes at the stove and you have a dish full of fluffy, light macaroni drenched in cheese goodness. A grand main dish all by itself. And a wonderful extender for a little leftover meat or chicken, too. Each package of Kraft Dinner gives you four good servings at the cost of only a very few cents a serving. Of course, this quick-made macaroni and cheese is extra popular right now. So it's wise to order your Kraft Dinner early in the week. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>